Hello, students. In this video, we're going to talk about finding the volume of pyramids. So you'll see there's two kinds of pyramids we're going to talk about. And I was not blessed with very good artistic capabilities. So I cannot really draw pyramids in 3D. So I have drawn their nets. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, you can look up photos of what pyramids in 3D look like, but basically just picture like the Egyptian pyramids, or if you've ever been if you ever seen pictures, um, there's like a building in Las Vegas, a hotel that's shaped like a pyramid. Um, one of the art installations or part of the Louvre where you enter the big art museum where the Mona Lisa and stuff is in Paris is a pyramid. You could look up pictures of that. <clears throat> Ms. Walker is just not great at drawing pyramids 3D. So we're going to talk about two kinds of pyramids, square-based pyramids and triangular-based pyramids. And you'll notice I've already put the formulas. Um, I kind of squared off the formulas for how we find the volume. Something that's really cool about the formula of pyramids is that these formulas are related to the area of their matching prism. So square base pyramid, that's kind of a misleading name because that doesn't mean the base has to be a square. Like it could be a rectangular base too. The sides don't have to be even, but they're literally called square based pyramids. So that's just kind of the name we're going to go with, but it could be a rectangle as well. Just keep that in mind. Um, if you look at the formula, the formula to find the volume is one third the length times width times the height, which length times width times height is how we find the volume of a cube or a rectangular prism. So you'll notice we're taking one third of that amount. And then if you look over here, I kind of wrote it up above the official formula. Um, this is a six, by the way, this says one six. I, sometimes my B's and my six look the same. Um, you'll notice that one half base times height times the height of the prism. Um, and then one third of all of that, this right here in parentheses, this is how we found the volume of a triangular prism. Those, uh, shapes that kind of look like tents. Um, if we take one third of all of that, that simplifies to this formula here. One third times one half is one sixth. So one sixth times the base times the height of the triangle and then times the height of the pyramid is equivalent to the volume of the triangular pyramid. So what you'll notice is if we take one third the volume of their matching base shape prism. So for example, if we take one third the volume of a triangular prism, we're gonna find the volume of a triangular pyramid. And then kind of the same thing, but with a square. So I'm just going to write that as a note. You don't really have to. It doesn't have anything to do with what you'll probably be asked on STAR or anything like that. But it's just kind of a way for you to relate the two formulas. Um, so one third the volume of matching prism. So that's just kind of unique. Um, if you Google like connection between prisms and pyramids, there's a lot of cool videos where they fill up, you know, like a pyramid with water and then they fill up a, let's say like a prism. So they'll fill up like a square based pyramid with water <coughs> and then they'll fill up a, a rectangular pr uh, prism with water that has the same, you know, rectangular base shape, the same size, same like dimensions and measurement and they measure the volume and the pyramid's volume is exactly one third of the prism. So that's kind of where these formulas come from. Just some background and history in your math lesson for you. Um, okay, we're just gonna use these formulas given some information and we're gonna practice finding the volume. So let's do the square base pyramid first. So let's say we have a length and width of our base shape rectangle. Um, let's say they are 12 and four. And then let's say the height of the pyramid is going to be five. Now, the way you measure height on a pyramid is, again, I'm not very good at drawing three-dimensional, so just kind of pretend like this makes sense. So if I'm looking at a pyramid, here's kind of like one wall, here's like the floor. They measure the pyramid from like the top point, I'm kind of drawing a dotted line, down to like the center of the floor where it makes like a perpendicular angle. Um, that's how you measure the height of the pyramids from like the top point straight down to the bottom. Um, okay. So 
it, cause if they don't give it to you in written format like this, if they give you a photo, the measurement that is going from the top of the point to the floor, that's the height of the pyramid, the H you need in your formula. So if I plug this into my formula, one third times length times width times height, I'm, I can do this a couple of different ways. I could take one third of like 12 and then do times four and times five. I could do 12 times four times five and then take a third of it. Remember when we take a third of something that's like dividing by three, but this is equivalent to 80 and I did not give you any units. So we would just say units cubed because it is volume. So that is the volume of this square base pyramid example. <clears throat> Let's do an example of a triangular base pyramid. So the way you would measure height is the same thing. It would be from the top point um, all the way to the center of the floor. But in this case, the floor is going to be a triangle. Um, and triangular pyramids also get like a special name if all of the triangles are the same size. It's called a tetrahedron, um, which is like one of e Euclidean's uh, three-dimensional shapes, which is big college math. Um, but it's just kind of unique. So just so you know. Okay, let's say in this problem, we have a base of five, a height of six, and then the height of the pyramid, I'm going to use capital H, remember there's a difference, um, is 11. So this has to do with the base triangle, right? And then this has to do with the height of the entire uh, pyramid. So if I plug them into the formula, I'm going to do one six times five times six times 11. And again, I can do this a variety of different ways. I can take one six times one of these numbers and then multiply by the other two. I can multiply everything in parentheses first and then take one six of it. Remember when I'm taking one six, that's like dividing by six. So this is all equivalent to 55 <clears throat> if I do the math. And then again, I didn't give you units. So we'll just say units cubed because it's volume. So um, volume of pyramids, just like prisms, you plug it into the formulas. The formulas are connected to the matching prisms. That's a little bit of history. Um, the main thing you want to make sure you distinguish is the height of the pyramid versus the height of the triangle. <clears throat> if they don't list out the measurements, I'm so sorry, I'm coughing in a couple of these past videos. I'm overcoming like the flu or something. Um, uh, if they don't give you the heights like this, you need to kind of identify them in the actual um, image. So just make sure you kind of look carefully so you understand the difference. All right, here are your practice problems. <clears throat> You're going to find the volume of each. So uh, the first one is a square pyramid, and the second one is a triangular pyramid. I have put the um, dimensions, width, length, height, base, height, and height below. You can choose whatever units you want, or you could just put units cubed at the end if you would like to do so. Um, remember, you can always check your uh, answers in the table of contents, ask your teacher for help. And as always, I hope you all have a good day. Bye.